What's good, people? This is Sam F. Ball Critic, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now, as you can see, I'm playing Battlefield 3, you know, having some fun. And I want you guys to take notice to, you know, my playing style in this game. You know, as far as this particular map, you know, I like to play Battlefield 3 differently depending on the map that I'm in. You know, for those of you guys who play this game, this game is a more, more of a strategic type of shooter. You know, I'm, I'm not going to put a stamp on it and say it's a true simulation, because it's not. Because there's things that I would like to still see in the game. But this game is more of a simulation as far as authentic type of, you know, war. You know, it's more of a authentic style, and you might say, as, as far as shooters. You know, whereas Call of Duty caters more towards the casual shooter. It's more of an arcade. It is a fun game, fun running gun. I don't necessarily play it. You know, I haven't played it. haven't even played Modern Warfare 3. But come on, I've played Call of Duty before. I've played Black Ops. I've played Modern Warfare 1 and 2. You know, i played World at War. i played all those games. Now, I just chose not to go with Modern Warfare 3. You know, I prefer this type of gameplay. More realistic, authentic type of shooter. So, you know, Battlefield is a series that I choose to run with. But anyway... There's some things, man, that I, I would like to see in shooters that I think would take it to the next level. Now, one of the things that I would mention, we've seen this before, and, and I'm curious to know why games like Battlefield and Call of Duty have not adopted this thing, you know, in their game. <laughs> the thing that I'm talking about is cover fire. I don't understand that. You know, if, if you guys remember playing the Rainbow Six series, you know, I played Rainbow Six Vegas. I believe it was part two that I had. Uh, whatever one that allowed you to put your own face in the game, <laughs> that was the one that I bought. That was a nice game. I enjoyed it. It had a lot of stuff, you know, very authentic type of things in that game for its time. As well as I remember Ghost Recon 2, I had that game. You could also take cover in that. Now, as far as the current game, you know, the one that I know of, um, you know, no, I don't have this game either, but I know that Gears of War allows cover fire as well. Now, for some of you guys who have no idea what I'm talking about, basically being able to hide behind an object, you know, a corner, you know, a car, vehicle, whatever, being able to take cover, peek around your cover, or look over top the cover, you know, peek around the corner, whatever you want to call it, and shoot. And it's going to get back in cover. That's something I don't understand why these shooters haven't adopted that. You know, games like Call of Duty and Battlefield, you know, on the level that they're on, especially especially Battlefield, you know, with trying to be more of a simulation type of game, there's no reason why Cover Fire is not incorporated in this game. I haven't played the campaign myself, but I've been advised by several guys that in the campaign of this game, you know, the enemies are always taking cover. So, in reality, it's in the game, but you can't do it. So, that's a big problem for me. And like I said, the reason being is I think these companies need to borrow from what's already been done. You know, I know a lot of you guys out there play Homefront. I haven't had a chance. Well, actually, I did play it. I played the demo. And Homefront, you can definitely tell, man, they borrowed from... The other shooters in the genre you know same thing crisis 2 did and there's nothing wrong with that that's just like vehicles you know honda gets a feature nissan has it nissan gets a feature toyota has it mercedes gets a feature bmw has it and so on and so on so it's not copycat you know it's basically taking advantage of a technology or an idea that someone else has already put forth and I think that these shooters should definitely do that, as well as the sports games. But I'm not even going to get into that with the sports games, because you guys already know what I'm saying. There's a lot of things in those games that other sports games don't have, and it really makes no sense to me. If the technology is out there, then they all should be able to take advantage of it. Now, let's get to the second thing. I would like to see realistic, I don't want to say injuries, but... I don't even know how to phrase it, guys, but what I want to see is if I get shot in the leg, in the future, I would like to see my leg affected. You know where now now I walk with a limp because I've been shot in the leg. 
I didn't get killed because it's not a death, you know, it's not a uh, a fatal wound, I guess you might say. Here, I, I can't talk right now. <laughs> you know, as you can see, I'm doing this off the fly. But yeah, maybe it's not a fatal shot. You know, it's not a shot to the head, a shot to the heart, or a vital organ that will kill you immediately. You know, let's say I like to see if I get shot in the shoulder, I want to see that shoulder affected, but I can continue to play. That would bring a level of realism to shooters that we've never seen before. Much like that kill you just seen me get right there. I kind of shot him in the back. So let's just say I didn't hit him in an area where he would have died. Maybe I hit him in the, you know, the lower back and he's wounded for a moment. Or in, you know, in the back shoulder. I would love to see that. You know, going forward. I can't say that these games should have it now because I've never seen that before. But going forward, man, with the next game consoles coming out and as technology continues to progress, I would love to see that. You know, let's see wounds actually happen. Let's see these players get wounded and they still can continue until they're actually taken out. You know, you get shot in the leg, I go for a while and the guy catches me in the head, I'm dead. But that would be a great thing to see in these shoes. And those are just two things, man, I've been thinking about. You know, I, there's other things that we all would love to see, I know. But, you know, like I said, I do these videos on the fly. And, you know, as ideas come to me, I have a gameplay ready. I go ahead, hit the record button, and I do the commentary. All right, so while I still have time, let me talk about this gameplay that you're watching. This is another problem I got in the, in the industry as far as shooters. I don't understand why guys camp so much. Now, let me explain what I'm saying. A game like Battlefield, very strategic. You know, if you choose the recon class and you have a sniper rifle, I expect you to camp in a spot and pick your targets off. Nothing wrong with that. The problem I have is a, a map like this. The you know, canal. Now, if you're not on the top of the bridge, which we all know that's what guys like to do their camping, no, not a big deal, man. I understand that. You have to adapt to the way guys are playing you. But if you are inside of one of the canals or one of these crates, <laughs> why are you camping? What is the purpose? I don't understand that. You know, to me, video games are supposed to be fun. You know how fun a shooter is when you run around and try to find your opponent? You either get killed or you kill. Kill or be killed. That's the fun aspect for me. You know, maybe it is fun for some of you guys to just hide the whole round and just pluck people off or whatever. Hey, that's your prerogative. But I'm saying, keep it relatively realistic. There should be no one camping on this map, and believe me, it happens. For you guys who play Battlefield 3, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So as you're going to see, man, I want you to see these final numbers. These are the type of gameplays that I get. Look at that. Double-digit kills. Double-digit deaths. That's what happened. You know, I'm generally more positive now. My game has improved, so generally I have more kills and deaths. But at the end of the day, I don't really care. It's a video game. I don't care about my rank or my stat. It's all about having fun. So that's just my question. How can you have fun if you're hiding the whole time? So I'm going to leave you guys with that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this commentary. Like always, guys, let me know what you think. I'll let you soon.